If you've been following the recent tidal wave of artificial intelligence announcements from Apple and Microsoft, you may have noticed that the new minimum requirements for Microsoft's Copilot Plus PCs powered by Windows whatever, and the latest slate of AI features from Apple on their latest Macintosh models all require a minimum, bare minimum, of six gigs of RAM. <laughs> Holy heavens. Not eight. Eight simply will not do. You must have 16 gigs of RAM. And for example, for example, Apple's Xcode, their development IDE, you will now have to have, in order to use all of the features like code completion, 16 gigs of RAM. What on earth is going on? And this immediately made my brain explode and ooze out my ears, full scanner style, everywhere. It was awful. Because if you think about it, it wasn't that long ago, at least it doesn't feel to me, that we had Mac OS 9, where if you had half a gig of RAM on Mac OS 9, oh boy, were you cruising. We weren't talking about needing half a gig for bare minimum. We were talking you were doing good. You were living the sweet life with that 512 megabytes of RAM. <laughs> None of this gigabyte of RAM. Sure, I guess it was theoretically possible, but... Who needed it? That was crazy. And go go back even further. Go back to Windows 3.11, Windows for work groups. That puppy purred on 16 megabytes of RAM. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing what you could do. And if you really think about it, those machines, uh, those operating systems, they just didn't have that much fewer features than what we've got now. Sure, lower resolution. Sure, they could handle less, less sizable files. But realistically, most of what we could do nowadays, we could do back then, including web browsing and photo editing and even video editing. Sure, it's faster now, but we had all of that back then. It seems wild to me that we're at the 16 gig point, which caused me to stop for a moment. What realistically is the trajectory here? I hear you hear many of different different rules about how regularly CPU speed or memory size increases and whatnot. But what really is the, tra the trajectory? And I ask that because I want to know what I need to mentally prepare myself for for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years in the future. Like, like how much RAM am I gonna have to have in my desktop PC, whether it's Linux or Mac or Windows or whatever it is, five years from now? So, so I, I took a quick look at five year intervals over the, from the whole life of the of the Macintosh, because I, really what spurred this on was an article about the Mac memory requirements. So I'm like, okay, well, let's look back over it. And if you go all the way back to the beginning, the very first Macintosh, the first one that shipped, with a GUI, with my, a mouse, with, 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 with drawing and word processing and all of it, had 128 kilobytes of RAM. <laughs> that was the original Macintosh. Now you could upgrade it to 512K, and later on they did, in fact, just kind of release a model that was the Mac 512K, that was the original Macintosh with 512K of RAM. But the first one, the, out of the gate in 1984, was 128K, not gigabytes, not megabytes, but kilobytes, right? All the way back there in 84. And I thought, okay, let's jump forward five years. Let's jump forward five years. What was the minimum viable memory requirements on Macintosh's shipping in 1989? And, and I, just to randomly pick one, I grabbed the Macintosh SE30, which shipped with four megabytes. And that was a very viable amount of RAM in that machine. Yes, you could add more, you could bump it up to eight and it was much, much better. But four was viable. You could do everything you wanted to do out of the box with that operating system, with that hardware, with four megabytes. And that was 1984. Notice we're still not to gigabytes yet. 1999, or that was 1989, 1994, jump forward five more years, and we've got the Power Macintosh 6160. I chose that one because I have one of those and I love them very much. Little pizza box, PowerPC-based Macs, fantastic. Eight megs. 
that's what they defaultly shipped with. Now, again, you could add in a lot more. And I tell you what, uh, getting it up to 16 megs really does make a difference. But you could have a fully viable system with all the features supported at 8 megabytes out of the box without upgrading it. So it was a minimum viable configuration of 8 megabytes in 1994. Jump forward to 1999. <laughs> 32 megs. 32 megabytes was a very common default minimum viable shipping configuration. At like, like the iMac G3 266 megahertz machine, those beautiful little iMacs, 32 megs. That was a, a common default at that point in time. And that was a fully viable amount of memory, including for web browsing. Want to load up Netscape, Internet Explorer, plus Microsoft Word, plus Apple Works, and a few other things, yeah, you could run it all at once on 32 megs of RAM in 1999, right? This, this, was, this was crazy, right? This is crazy when you compare it to the 16 gigs that are now being required. Okay, so let's jump forward five more years. To no, notice, notice this bar graph. For those of you watching the video version, sorry for those of you who are listening to the podcast, but I've got a bar graph here. But it basically is not moving until 2004 when things jump up to 256 megabytes, right? This is a pretty significant increase. In fact, one of the most significant increases in memory default usage over the history of the Macintosh line. And, and it's mirrored pretty closely for Windows P. PCs and, and, and other workstations as well. Uh, the, uh, the G5 iMac shipped with 256 megs, and that was a very, very usable configuration on that. In fact, you could probably get away with a little bit less, but that was very usable configuration in 2004. Now, now here's the thing. Look at that 1989 to 1994 to 1999. Notice a couple of things. It either jumped up by double every five years or it kind of quadrupled or more every five years. I mean, this the memory requirements was were increasing rapidly, right? Rapidly throughout the throughout the 80s and throughout the 90s and into the early 2000s. And really, if you look at this chart, it's only it's only just getting ramped up. 2009, the MacBook Air Core 2, just to grab a random model from 2009, shipped with two gigs of RAM. Jump forward to 2014, it doubled to four gigs of RAM in the MacBook Air. Same MacBook Air model, it doubled the amount of RAM over the course of five years. Jump forward to 2019, five years later still, the iMac i3, although you could have grabbed a, any of a number of different models, and again, it doubled to eight gigs of RAM. And eight gigs of RAM is roughly where it stayed for a couple of years as the minimum viable RAM threshold. Eight gig is, has kind of been that line where many, many PC makers, Mac makers, and whatnot have stayed right around that eight gig mark for quite a while now. But in 2024, over the last couple of months, everyone's kind of making that shift to say, now we're going to require 16 gigs. So what we have is a clear pattern over the, but from uh, essentially a little bit before 2009, all the way to present, where the RAM is, the RAM requirements is roughly doubling every five years for minimum viable configurations of, of shipping operating systems on, on shipping hardware. So where do we go with that? All right, well, let's extrapolate that out. Let's assume that we won't have any more than doubling jumps over the coming years, right? Which we did. If you look back over this, the 1984 to 1989, uh, that was a huge jump. We jumped from 128K to 4 megs. That was a big jump. That was way more than doubling, right? We're talking about uh, uh, multiplying. I can't do the math on that. 40? I don't know. It's multiplied by a lot. The same is true when you go from 1994 to 1999. It went from 8 to 32. You multiplied by 4 that over that five-year period, not by, not by double. So doubling only barely scratches the surface. It more than doubles regularly. But over the last, you know, 
15, 20 years, we've stayed pretty consistent, uh, especially the last 15 years, of doubling every five years. So let's assume we're going to keep doing that and extrapolate that out over the next 15 years. What that means is that by 2029, five years from now, 32 gigs will be the standard. In order to have a minimum viable system, you will need 32 gigs of RAM. That is insane but it bears out that it seems to be the likelihood of what we're talking about here uh five years after that 2034 so 10 years from now 64 gigs will be the standard 64 gigs of ram that's crazy i mean here's the thing you can build a machine with 64 gigs of ram right now but to make that the minimum viable configuration seems just wild to me and then of course 15 years out from now, 2039, we're talking about 128 gigs in order to have a minimum viable operating system where you can actually do word processing. Um, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I'm ready to accept that this is the way things are going. And I understand that there are some pieces of functionality where having that much RAM is going to be useful and beneficial. I get it, I get it. There are functions that, that can take advantage of that much RAM. But having come from the world of, let's say the 1990s, right? I was out there building software at these mega companies in the late 90s, and we were building whole office suites that required mm, eight, 12 to 16 megabytes of RAM. Not gigabytes, megabytes. And that was already at the time considered bloated. So when I look at this, it makes my head spin at the sheer level of insane bloat that we're seeing here. Look at, look at web browsers, where, where tabs on web browsers are taking a gig, sometimes more of RAM, for a tab on a web page. Something that, that in the olden days would have taken kilobytes. Something that would have... <laughs> It would have not taken, you know, gigs of RAM. I mean, we're talking a, a web page might be taking a meg of RAM for everything, including the 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 pictures and the the page layout and the processing. And sure, okay, okay, you could convince me that it needs a meg of RAM for the browser to do all that stuff, but a gig. What on earth is going on there? And now we're looking at some of the basic core pieces of functionality being injected into development tools and code editors and 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 just the simple search functionalities on our desktops that are now requiring 16 gigs of RAM. What in the heavens? You could go back to the 1990s and have full 3D modeling suites all running in four to 16 megabytes of RAM. I mean, look at... Uh, Look at the TV show Babylon 5, right? Uh, and I know it, many of you are like, A, what the heck is a Babylon 5? And then I'm like, okay, you kids are not old enough to be alive. I don't understand what's going on. Go watch Babylon 5. Uh, and then, then the rest of you are like, oh my gosh, he's going to talk about the cheesy 3D effects in Babylon 5. And you bet your butt I am. Babylon 5, for the initial... A few episodes, the initial episode especially, of Babylon 5, space TV show, the special effects were created by the guy who wrote it and created the show on his Amiga at home. Uh, I believe using Lightwave 3D that came with the, the Amiga video toaster. And he, he was able to do that, I, I believe, with 8 megs of RAM. That was a pretty beefy machine. <laughs> and it, yeah, by today's standards, you know, okay, those special effects aren't the most top notch, but they were pretty good considering they were cranked out on, a, on an average desktop class PC in the 1990s. And, and here we are in 2024 requiring 16 gigs of RAM to search text files on your computer or to look up a fact what in the heck is going on? We used to have Encarta and other online digital, uh, when I say online, I mean, I mean, <laughs> not on the internet, but like on, on a CD, uh, archives of, of encyclopedic knowledge that we could look up and you could do it in 640K of RAM. It worked great. I, I am a bit baffled. 
I, I am a bit baffled to say the least. I am disheartened that we're going to be looking at a 128 gigabyte future in the not too distant future. And I am confused as to why it is necessary. I mean, shoot, I've got eight gigs in the machine I'm recording this on. I'm doing real time video compositing and I'm barely breaking a sweat on this machine with eight gigs of RAM. At the same time as I'm doing this, I've got a virtual machine running, emulating an old Mac OS 9 PowerPC Macintosh, not breaking a sweat at all. Don't even have to think about it. I started recording this, not realizing that the Macintosh was still the virtual machine that I took this screenshot of, the screenshot of Mac OS 9.2. I took the screenshot right before I started. I forgot to close the virtual machine down. It's still emulating it in the background right now. It's not breaking a sweat at all. Eight gigs of RAM. 8 gigs of RAM is a ton of RAM. I mean, I'm sure, maybe I just think that because of the amount of gray that's in my beard. <laughs> maybe I'm just an old fogey at this point. But 16 seems insane. Uh, I, but here we go. 128 gigs is, is in our future in the next 15 years. I, I'm, I'm putting that estimate out there right now. It is going to be minimum that. Microsoft, Apple, other companies are going to come out and they're going to come up with a new feature that's going to be like uh, Clippy can't recommend text to you unless you have 128 gigs of RAM. <laughs> Seriously, it's going to happen and it's going to make me cry and I'm going to write an article or do a show about it and I'm going to be cranky and then I'm going to go outside and I'm going to yell at the clouds and it's going to be fantastic. Uh, and that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about today. Uh, I just needed to get that all off my chest and put that estimate out there in the universe so you can look at this chart and be disheartened just like I was. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the intertubes, I do declare <laughs> and broadcast.